This video is going to be about age and isometrics. But if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. My name is Eric Moss. I'm a personal trainer, motivational speaker, and a modern day performing strongman. If you're unfamiliar with what a modern day performing strongman is, picture the old time strongman. Legends of the past like the Mighty Adam and Alexander Zass. They would perform real life feats of strength as part of a live show. I do a similar thing, but with a modern day twist. Some of the feats of strength that I've performed in front of a live audience include things like bending steel bars, breaking chains, twisting horseshoes, rolling up frying pans, driving nails through wooden boards by hand, and even holding back a high performance motorcycle while taking off at full throttle. Now, being a modern day performing strongman and the fact that there's not a whole lot of us around these days to answer people's questions, in an effort to grow my YouTube channel by giving you guys what you want and spread the gospel of strength according to Eric Moss, I started a YouTube series called Ask Eric Moss, where I would invite you to ask me a question by dropping it in the comments below. And when you do that, I try to get back to you with your very own custom video answering your question. Pretty neat, right? So this question comes from at Lord Sonata 3121. And that's actually two videos in a row that I'm answering this, this question. And the second one also regarding age. Hi, can old guys do isometrics? What can you do for your stomach? Thank you for asking that. As for whether or not you can do isometrics, that's really a question that's probably more appropriate for a medical provider. But assuming you have a relatively clean bill of health, it should be relatively safe as long as you do it safely. So one of the issues that sometimes happens with isometrics is with breath holding. So when you're doing overcoming isometrics specifically, um, when you're going for like a max effort on like a deadlift or something like that, it is good to hold your breath because your breath supports your spine. But on isometrics, your spine isn't really under load, so to speak. It's not pushing down on you. It's you're pushing against the surface or pushing against an object. So you don't really need that spinal stability. And when you hold your breath under a max effort type of thing, like an overcoming isometric, um, your blood pressure spikes up. Now, if you have cardiovascular issues or blood pressure issues, might not be the best idea. But if you have a relatively clean bill of health, you should be okay. Now, some of the advantages of overcoming isometrics are that there isn't any joint abrasion since there's no actual movement occurring, which can be a really good thing for somebody who has joints that complain. I said in a previous video, and I think it was actually in response to your question, that in most cases, for most people, I provide progressive overload as the solution, but if their, if their elbows start complaining or any other joint starts complaining, which can happen just from the joint abrasion, that's when I would switch it to isometrics. And I tend to do this more on the single joint movements um, because there's also less of that nerve innervation so that we don't overtax the central nervous system. Now, as for what can you do for your stomach, well, <clears throat> I'm assuming that this is a question about isometrics for the stomach, in which case, one of the things that people often negate is they don't think of other movements as isometrics, which if you are doing, let's say a barbell curl, the movement is happening at the joint, but your abs, your lower back, they're all working together isometrically to help stabilize you against a potentially shifting load. So technically, that is an isometric. Um, planks, isometrics. When you're doing push-ups, that's an isometric for your abs, even though it's dynamic movement from your, up, from your limbs. Um, one of the things that I sometimes have people do, and I don't have a, a ball here now, is for an overcoming isometric specifically for the abs, Besides doing an RKC style plank, which is 
um, a version of isometrics that would be for the abs and has an incredibly high abdominal activation rate. But I would take a partially deflated yoga ball. They would be sitting down. They would put the yoga ball in their lap, and then they would take their elbows and drive down into the yoga ball because there's a, there's a bit of give with the yoga ball, but at some point you're not going to push it any further. And in doing so, that generates a lot of tension on the abs. That would be an idea. Um, one of the things that you're going to want to do is make sure you're breathing steadily, like tiny little breaths in and out. In, um, in Strong First in the RKC systems, they call it breathing behind the shield where your abs are tight, everything is tight, but you're still breathing in and out evenly without losing that tension. So I'm trying to think if there's anything that I'm leaving out. Yeah, and you could do that from a variety of angles as well. The key thing um, is working with what you can. You know, like, in my gym, I have a, access to a lot of different stuff that I've collected over the years. You might not have access to a lot, but you're gonna have access to something. And use certain principles with this. So, and I've said this about isometrics before, one of the things with isometrics, and I think it's why it fell out of favor for a lot of people over the years, is there's something called the law of accommodation. And with the law of accommodation, it's basically too many exposures to the same stimulus, your body just stops adapting. It says, whatever this is, it doesn't seem to be a threat, so I don't need to continue to adapt. Now, with isometrics, depending on what it is, if it's curls, you can change the exercise up by simply changing the angle of what you're doing. So like if it's curls, you could do it for like four weeks or so at 90 degrees, four weeks at the top, four weeks at full extension. Um, with abs, there's not like a whole lot of room to do that with. You're pretty much just going to be here or here. That, and that's like within 30 degrees. So you have to find another way of varying it up. In which case, what I would be doing when I'm doing a cycle where the angle doesn't change at all is I would take a pair of dice, throw it, and how many dots are up would determine the amount of seconds I hold the contraction for. And then I'll take a single die, throw it, and that would be how many rounds I do. That is a way of varying it while keeping it the same so that we don't ha hit that law of accommodation, but we can still stay, stay within the same thing to achieve that um, stimulus without the law of accommodation coming in, or at least minimizing it as much as we can. But anyways, I hope that answers your question. If anybody else has any questions for me, uh, uh, drop it in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you with your very own custom video. But if you like this video, let me know by hitting that like button. If you want to see more of this sort of thing or you want to see the chronicles from my various performances, subscribe to the channel. If you think anybody should see this, please share it with them. This YouTube thing isn't rocket science. And if you want to support the channel, there's a couple different things that you could do. One is keep watching my videos. That definitely helps. Comment. That definitely helps me get caught by the algorithm. And um, you can also buy a copy of my book if you want to learn more about my story and how I got involved in all this stuff. Uh, there's a link in the description. You can also just search my name on Amazon and you'll find a copy of my book. I am not the one that's the architect, by the way. And also, one of my cousins started a company called Good For You Coffee Club. And if you use the promo code MYPOWER10, you get 10% off of your order. And the coffee is good coffee. It's free of pesticides, mold, and all sorts of junk that they put in your, that they sometimes put in coffee. And it's just delicious coffee. But anyways, that is it for today. Until next time, please stay happy, healthy, and strong. Eric Moss, over and out.